It's being called the number one crisis affecting mammals in this country. Scientists from more than 100 state and federal agencies now coordinating their efforts to learn why bats are dying in droves. CBS News correspondent Benny Wynn is here with the story, and it turns out a lot of us may actually know something about this. Oh, yes. It's a trickle-down a trickle down effect, essentially. Have you noticed more bugs this summer? Yes, I thought it was Absolutely. just me. No, everybody is. And if you are, you can blame the bats. Or, to be more exact, blame the fungus that is killing the bats in unprecedented numbers. It is a desperate situation with no solution in sight. Bats often get a bad rap as creepy, blood-sucking night creatures. But people don't really know the level of importance that they have in our ecosystem. But and farmers like James Roby actually like count on them to eat 100 metric tons of crop-damaging bugs every year. That's been very badly damaged by uh, some kind of caterpillar or worm, and that would have been potentially controlled by a bat that would have nailed the moth, that would have laid the eggs on this leaf to begin with. That's not happening because bats are in danger. A fast-spreading fungus called white nose syndrome has wiped out a million of them in 18 East Coast states. White nose syndrome leaves a fungus on a bat's nose, wings, and body that eventually leads to starvation. The die-off is so great and so fast, the U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife has declared bats the number one mammal in crisis in this country. It's a female. One type, the little brown bat, is headed for the endangered species list. What was really our most common bat three years ago, now uh, we need to learn an awful lot more about it in a hurry so that we can do all we can to save it. This team from the U.S. and Vermont Fish and Wildlife Services is in a race against time could be white nose syndrome. There is no cure for white nose syndrome and there are no funds to find one. All they can do is research why it's happening. What kind of bat is that? Can you tell? Um, not until it's still. Getting these bats out of the net can be tricky, even for the experts. This is really, really, Yeah, that's really, really, really tangled, tangled up in there. Susie von Ottingen is an endangered species specialist for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. You got mosquitoes all over you. Yeah, I, I do. Aren't they supposed to be eating these mosquitoes? I think of mosquitoes for these bats as potato chips. Ta-da! All right. Okay. Got it? Got it? Let me close it. Bag my first bat. Uh, maybe it was, uh, do we have any more bats? There he goes. Oh, he's climbing to the top. You're right, he is trying to get out. Yep. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Woo! I'm afraid this is going to open. Down? These bats are then tagged and weighed. 8.1? 8.1 grams, which is a little bit more than three pennies. Ooh, he's a little feisty thing. Yes, these little brown bats are rather rambunctious. One bat caught tonight is outfitted with a transmitter. It takes precision of putting this little small transmitter on a small animal, and so you don't want to weigh it down. By literally carrying the burden on their backs, the hope is these bats will help scientists figure out how to We're keep ready. them alive. Go. There she goes. But for farmers, it might be a little too late. How much time do you have? Very little time. Less than a year. And then what happens? Um, it spreads out west and we lose millions and millions of bats. Bats contribute an estimated $23 billion annually to the agricultural industry through insect control and pollination. That's money farmers might have to spend on pesticides. Potentially, I mean, it could be apocalyptic. I mean, because we're talking about a check that's been in place for years that takes care of hundreds of tons of insects. And that problem is going to be very similar to the clouds of locusts. Not only is it going to affect our crops, but it's going to affect our people. Do we have any more data for this? And that's exactly what these scientists are desperately trying to prevent. One thing they do know is that the fungus thrives in caves where certain species of bats hibernate in the winter. The fungus first appeared five years ago in a cave near Albany, New York. The Fish and Wildlife Service thinks hikers unknowingly got the fungus on their gear and then started spreading it. And now it is killing the bat population. And, and the farmer you spoke with, our James Service, pa paints a very dire situation yeah. in the near term. So you said there's no cure. Mm -hmm. They're doing research. But other than that, is there anything they can do in the immediate? The only thing they can do right now and what the U.S. US Fish and Wildlife Service is doing is closing off certain caves and mines where the bats go in to hibernate so that researchers can get in there and figure out how to prevent this from happening. But it's a lot of research, but mainly they need prevention at this point because, as you heard, time is of the essence. Well, does that also, by closing them off, it keeps 
potentially if they think it's hikers from going in there and then bringing it out and right. spreading it. And spreading it to other caves. It's amazing that you kind of lose sight of just how important bats are. I mean, yeah, I think a lot of yeah. people think, oh, bats a nuisance, a little right. bit scary, it's but it's very much system. almost like kind of like the honeybee and that you just kind of lose sight right. of the fact Which that could mean more there. pesticides if they, you know, can't stop these bats from dying because the insects will continue to eat the crops, which means that more pesticides are going to raise the price of what you're buying in the grocery store. So, again, that trickle yeah. down. Well, the, the cost yeah. alone for farmers and government. Mm -hmm. right, Eddie, thank you. Sure. Eddie, thanks. Mm -hmm.